It's the Gangnoon Hockey Center, home to the Para Ice Hockey Tournament at the Pyeongchang Paralympic Winter Games. It's Canada and Sweden in Group A ice hockey action. As you get a little look inside, if you haven't already, at this wonderful venue, purpose-built for the Olympic Games and obviously utilized here for the Paralympic Games right here in the heart of the Olympic and Paralympic Park as Canada will take well, to the ice first. Please welcome to the ice. Looking there at Corbin Canada. Watson, number 30. He is a long tenured part of the and Canadian now, fabric of this ice. para ice hockey Sweden. program. The Canadians come into this tournament ranked number one in the world by right of winning the gold medal in the world championship on this exact ice surface just over a year ago. Sweden take to the ice in their signature three corona in their gold and blue. And they'll be backstopped by their 53-year-old Alf Nielsen in goal. For Sweden, they finished sixth in that tournament just a year ago, the World Championships in this facility. They were not a part of the 2015 World Championships in Buffalo as we look at the Italy, well, the Group A standing. Italy with a victory in extra time. They did that in a game-winning shootout format earlier today. This is the referees and the captains come together. So both these sides, their first matchup of the para ice hockey tournament in Pyeongchang, Canada and Sweden. Getting themselves underway in day one of competition. Forward number 20, Nicholas Rakos. There you see the exchange between the two respective captains, Greg Westlake and Peter Oyala of Sweden. The two teams just the starting lineups on the ice. Ken Babby led this side to that gold medal in this building a year ago. And it was the gold medal, though, that belonged to USA in Sochi that the Canadians are going to try to reclaim if they can. That's what the intention is here at Pyeongchang. This is their lineup. They've got depth of plenty. Adam Dixon on the blue line, one to be looking out for. Equally, Brad Bowden, 27. The two of them control that blue line position. And a new bit of leadership for Sweden as their head coach, Eric Fickstrom, is in charge. All Nielsen is really much the story of the side. Perkins Berry, number eight, one to look for as well. They're going to have their hands full here today, Sweden, against the powerhouse Canadian side. Corbin Watson has been right there at the top of his game for Canada. And he and Dominic Larock, the one-two punch for the Canadians in goal. He can certainly carry it forward. Ken Corbin Watson, he's 31 years of age. And there you're seeing Alf Nielsen, 53. And a little bit of a cult hero in the para ice hockey fold. He may not appear the most youthful or spry of goalkeepers, but he has got a tremendous catching glove hand. And he's got stamina. He can take shots aplenty. Westlake, the captain of this Canadian side. He has been at the heart of this program now since the beginning of the Para Ice Hockey Tournament that started at the Paralympics in 1994. It really is a trio of superstars. Billy Bridges, Westlake, Bout, as we look at the readiness of both teams. It's Canada and Sweden in Para Ice Hockey coming up. Underway, Canada in red with the black trim, and it is Sweden with gold and blue. It's Canada to take it here to start. And Dixon, he will be in and around, shooting, passing, distributing, goes off the outside of the right of the goal. Already a penalty coming up for Sweden as they tee into the Canadian players, just trying to recover on that shot from Dixon. Not sure whether Westlake is grimacing there or whether he's smiling on the play. And it's going to be teeing. And the shot comes here. Just a quick one from Dixon. 
Goes off the outside, trying to test the Nielsen glove hand. But it's going to be Canada now with the player advantage on the power play. And Bridges out there setting things up. So as you see, it is Oala, the captain, already in the box. As this for Canada, right into position, wide open. What a save. And already, though, that wasn't going to count as the play was called dead by the official, saying that Canada had already penetrated that half circle blue paint area in front of all fields in school. So that brings the face off now outside of Sweden's defensive line. And Canada still with the player advantage. So to the near side here. Of a different alignment as they come across, trying to feed it to Liam Hickey. Hickey, so Canada kind of a spread formation, not uh, allowing Sweden with his four players to be able to really control the Canadian puck movement. They've got this release valve option as Westlake, Bridges, Hickey, and McGregor. They're going to line up again. It's going to be to the wide side, Hickey, as McGregor fronts up. What a save there made by Nielsen, but it wasn't going to count anyhow as Billy Bridges had already penetrated. Here comes Canada across and into the offensive zone. And they will come in waves. It is going to be what you might sense a long day, potentially for Sweden. Here comes Canada. Oh, Bridges just goes for it and whiffs at it. Can't quite get the touch that he wants. Is this now back for Bridges? He'll probably this time. Oh, what a save by Nielsen. He's already under siege in the Sweden goal. And Canada has not required an invitation here to get going on this power play in this first period. As we're just over a minute gone in this hockey game, and they're already well, well, well focused and certainly getting opportunity in front of Nielsen, but not got a return as yet since inside of a minute. So this power play remains, and Dixon comes back. I saw his wry smile as the camera went up and down the line there. And Preparations for the players to be introduced to the ice. Camera very close to them, obviously, at their height as they're in their sleds and readiness for the action. This is for Hickey, backside McGregor. Oh, there it goes. Off we go. Cannon on the power play. And it's a pocket rocket straight up into the top drawer. And that's McGregor dancing with Canada's first goal. So it had very much look on, hadn't it, in the opening phases of the not even two minutes gone. But this play across McGregor, he just did the last little move just for a little bit of show. As Nielsen throws the glove up, but it's a little too little, a little too late. And underway, as this now will be the Canadians to take the face off and the layoff here for Shola Mickey. Shola Mickey is another powerful force, a power forward, if you will, for Canada. As he'll just rotate through and look at when he wants to provide service to a teammate. He attempts a shot there, but it gets blocked down. And now, for Canada coming out of the corner here. It's to be moved on. Oh, what a play here! It's on the money for Sholamiki. Sholamiki, you're so fine. You've got Canada dining with a second goal. And the Canadians enjoying that. Back to back Jacks says it's McGregor with the first one at 152 on the power play. And then here, the second one, it's Brian Sholamiki at 222. Even strength goal from Armstrong and James Dunn. Watch the feed right across. You're not going to touch him from there. Sholamiki, a berry boy. It's, it's interesting. Is you get to cover some of these athletes and then to know them a little bit and then become social media connected with them. The route to Pyeongchang, well, it went through this exact ice surface a year ago at the World Championships level, and it looks as though the Canadians are well on point again 
as sharp as they want to be in the opener of this tournament in the way they've started this hockey game for sure. A spin move and a turn. And this now driving forward. This is Cozzolino. Cozzolino just waiting to see just how he wants to engage this Swedish defense. Now he's got more moves right now than Sweden can pay attention to. As out front, oh, Bridges. Bridges gets his hands tied up there. And I think at the final moment, he's had a couple clutches at it. Now Sweden break it up. And is this going to amount too much? Ingvarsson. Oh, what a chance there. Arsenal tried to separate Ingvarsson right from the puck. And he went into the boards. He was doing the almost the 50-yard dash in a 40-yard gym there. He was just going so hard and almost got himself in trouble by being that aggressive against Ingerson. As this crossed the line, Sweden collapsed and closed down like an accordion at that blue line and preventing Canada any easy access in. McGregor doesn't need any easy access. He'll take it back from you if you don't mind. And here he's got it. And he's, again, He's looking at electric right now is McGregor on this puck. He's carved, he's weaved, he's fired one right into Nielsen. And he has got a howitzer from that half hip position. And he almost darts a third one for Canada. Nielsen makes a good save. And boy, he needs it. As you can see, and it is going to be a lot of rubber coming in on Alf Nielsen and the sweet goal. Great look inside those benches. And of course, the ice that's there in readiness. All the modifications that have gone on in the Gangnam Hockey Center, of course, the boards, making sure that they're transparent in front of the benches so the players can see. And of course, it looks as though we have a timeout here. It's an opportunity as it should be. It's a little technical timeout. It's a great teaching moment for Vickstrom as he gets the board right out and so does Babby. These opportunities of course everyone in live play. And this is really him talking to I believe about how they've tried to go center. They've come down and he's saying, just play the puck into the corner. Let's go pursue it and get it. They've tried to make moves coming down the right wing a couple of times already, Canada, and then cut to the middle. And basically Sweden have just controlled the pass and have not allowed them an easy access. That was earmarked for the bottom corner. If he elevates it, I'm pretty sure he's got a goal there. Nielsen's glove is there, but it needed even more elevation interesting to have seen whether or not Nielsen could have made that save if he was just above his pad. Back to position. It's Canada in the offensive zone. They're already 2-0 up. And they've, again, taken control of the puck on the faceoff. Hickey moves it around. And the Swedish player losing his stick. chase a feather in the wind and try to get back one of these sticks as they get away from you. And then you're only with one to try to propel yourself towards it. And then you do get there and it's an almighty handful often enough as McGregor gets squeezed. It's Swedish sandwich there. And it will be just played off and into the neutral zone. And off they go. Here comes Canada. McGregor has looked very much like he's emerged into the preeminent puck controlling position on this Canadian lineup. There's a shot there, he'll go wide. And he is just asserting himself here is McGregor. Right there, Westlake backside touch in, McGregor scores it. And he is in and around everything right now. And he touches the puck before it crosses the line for another Canadian goal. It's their third. Nielsen feels the pain. And it looks a little bit like Canada are on the power play. This feed from Westlake is perfect. and But even better, maybe the anticipation from 
McGregor, every component as necessary as the other for Canada to take a third goal and a commanding lead here as we're just over five minutes gone. Team Canada goal scored by number eight, Tyler McGregor. And Canada across this line one more time. Shola Mickey will just lay up and put it off here for Dixon. Dixon with the offload down. And is he going to get it back? Just waiting. Is this trouble? It is. Shola Mickey has just doubled up his tally as he's going to brace inside of six minutes of this opening period. And this is turning into a little bit. Wow. It's overwhelming. I, I'm trying to recall if I've seen this many goals to start a game in this short of time. As Shola Mickey takes it and just knifes it up and over Nielsen. And the glove hand isn't going to stop that one. So Canada have just come out here and are just overpowering and overwhelming speed by some significant margin as they've already tallied four goals on the board. And Sweden hasn't really had a whole lot of puck time as yet. So this is we need to watch closely here, whether the Canadians are going to continue to rev their engines or whether it's going to bring a little bit of calm to proceedings as they'll move forward. And taken by Smith through the middle as Dixon has got two Swedish defenders, both at sixes and sevens deciding how they wanted to defend it. In the end, they chose seven, and they were fortunate. As they made the pool cue shot to get it off of his stick, but here comes Canada again. Into the corner, just rotating, running one-man cycles right now, as Delaney will just put it to the far side. Bridges, oh my, or is this Westlake? It is, as they just lay it on here. It is Bridges, rather. Bridges has got more shake and bake than you could put in the oven right now. Look at this. It's to the back side. It is again, I don't know how they don't score, Canada. As there was more deception coming from Billy Bridges than you might see at a poker table. As Canada are kept out. And Nielsen, a moment of respite. They're winning the faceoff here. Quickly back and just have a little look at maybe what the tally is on the faceoff. 90%. They've won nine from ten. Have uh, Canada so far. They had a minute and 36 seconds on the power play. And well, they made good use of that. And they are continuing to come forward. And the Canadians are not a nation nor is Paralympic sport known for the mercy this play, but right now they are executing at such a high standard that it really is a massive disparity. As here comes the Canadians again. They're gonna try on the short side. Don't quite get all of that shot. Sweet pushing out, trying to keep this play to the outside, maybe here. And that will be just broken up. So Sweden really forced to just try to hold their defensive positioning right now and not allow themselves to get broken down. That's going to go up and over the bar. Nielsen knew about it, but a half a second beyond when it needed to be. He was fortunate, though, that it was elevated up over the crossbar. That's going to be a problem. It's kept out. I don't know how he makes that save as I think it was Casalino comes around. And where is that puck? As Alf Nielsen does just enough to keep it out for a Canadian fifth goal. And Delaney, the author of this play, coming around. And I don't know how Nielsen makes that save. He gets the leg to it, and he just is able to squeeze that down as he tips his sled forward and pressures the puck to the ice and prevents it from crossing the goal line. Again, Canada take the draw. And this for Dixon. Chance Hickey. Hickey might get this shot off, but again, this is better from Sweden. As they front up and just try to play man to man. Right down. That don't get everything on that one either. And good save. A little bit better here from Sweden. 
That looked like Corbin Smith, who was just trying to. Maybe he just bumps. There's McGregor, who is already. He scored a couple. Shola Mickey has the other two, as they are proving to be double trouble right now for Sweden. Westgate out there with Hickey and McGregor. Arsenal takes collection. Hickey, oh, he's got a lane and a wide open one. He'll only blame himself there as he had every opportunity of going high and tight to the right corner. He just misses the goal. As this now will be Canada to come up with it. Westlake. Saw that great pass. There's another beauty. How about this one even better? The shot not quite as tight as it goes up and over the bar. bar and where will the next one come from? Dixon can do things as well offensively for Canada. He can do it from the blue line. He can do it from the goal line low. He's a defender right now, pretty much leading this offensive zone cycle, which is not normal. As this for McGregor, he goes off the bar, goes off for Nielsen. I don't know if it's a goal, is it a goal? It is. And McGregor has got a hat trick inside of the opening 10 minutes of this first game. And Nielsen is asking, when is the first period over? Hard to tell, but the referee was right on it. I thought the way it went off of, uh, of Nielsen, didn't know whether or not it had breached the Swedish goal. But he gets it off, does McGregor. Nope, that's a goal all day. And it's just the deflection there. It comes out so quick anymore. The net is so tight. And Nielsen, he can feel it. How about McGregor? He has come out here and put three on the board as Westlake and Dixon get assists on the play. Dixon already with three assists in the game. And you got Hickey with an assist and a goal. Pretty much the Canadians having it all their own way right now. And as I say, I've seen some big periods before. That opening four was so quick that it was hard to imagine a time where I'd seen it as quick as that. Because they scored four in five minutes and 39 seconds. And Sweden would have been ready for them. As you see, it's it's a one-way traffic. Again, new hockey center ice pad right now. As Canada are again just loading up and getting ready. And it would be interesting to see, just call it straight, when they call off the dogs as far as how much they're going to continue to run the score up. Be interesting as they continue to just work and move it around. They've made a little bit of a miscue here on the back, and that'll just take a little bit of air out of their balloon. A little lead out of their pencil, and the crowd likes it. It's fair enough. As now, it's sweet with a little bit of pressure. They got something in it. There's their first shot. That's encouraging. It all starts with the first one. It's now Canada will get it back. Bit of puck pressure and physicality there. That's important. In Canada, not for long. As here they come, up and across this line. Corbin Smith, he's just doing a little bit of an offload here. They've got support. This now could have developed early, but this Dixon, ever present on the puck. And he goes to the left hand side. He scores. And Dixon with his first goal of the Pyeongchang Paralympic Games. Or is it Bridges? Who got the last touch? It's all just details. In the end, Canada are overwhelming Sweden here. They've got a half dozen. And 3.47 still remain in the opening period. Watch it here. Bridges in front. Dixon. And does Bridges get the touch? I don't think so. He just provides the most perfect of screens. And I think that's the pleasure that Bridges was taking. It's an excellent fundamental hockey play for Bridges to have provided the screen in front. And it's a controversial move. Some players have embellished that particular move in such memorable style, but he just holds with a big body, just Bridges, holds in the line of sight that doesn't allow Nielsen to know 
just where it was. Dixon was going. The play is still alive. I think Nielsen's trying to get the lobster caught on it, but it's over. His lobster's been cooked. As now it's a seven. And Canada are not showing any mercy at all. As they continue to overpower this European side. And 13 shots to one is currently the situation. And right in front, Casalino is holding on. The puck is still alive. So you thought that maybe from our vantage point that it had been frozen by Alf Nielsen. But unfortunately for him, what he was executing in the most there was Snow Angels. And Casalino gets to the puck first. And across this line, a little offside. Canada, you know, hard to really comment at just about what they're executing right here because it's it's almost at a level of perfection and that's very unusual in ice hockey regardless of Canada being favored as the number one overall in this tournament coming in this is beyond I think what anybody was anticipating It's important for Vikstrom, the Swedish coach, to maintain the proper body language and to, of course, recognize that, okay, it was never really, once we saw how things were going in the early minutes, it's going to be about the results here. But it's about our performance, and our performance has got to be better in a lot of the small areas. It's Cosolino. I mean, that's just staying with the play. As he was, well, he executed perfect. Poise there from the Canadian in front. And Sweden a little bit late getting to the face-off dot. And out they go. So when it's not the Canadians inflicting a little bit of punishment, it's the referees having to hold the letter of the law and how the game has to be played and, of course, officiated. This now, a lay on. It's Dixon. Dixon is the first player to it. He's such an aggressive defender offensively so willing to get involved and the confidence is so high that they, they don't mind taking the risk because the risk would be a, a transition game from your opponent which at the moment you're seeing is, is not really something that they need to be particularly threatened about. Nielsen is appealing. You wonder here whether he's appealing that the, oh, that coming in. That's a little bit of an issue there. In fairness, McGregor has his sledge kind of right up there into Nielsen's face, and you can see what he's taking exception to there. Dixon, what do we have? We have four goals between Sholomicki, oh, five. We forgot that trick already from McGregor. And so five goals between Sholomicki and McGregor, and then Dixon and Cosolino, the other two from Canada. This for Canada across this line. Can they get to it? Shola Mickey. So Mickey will be the next one with a touch of it across the line, looking to get his first hat trick. How about that? The hat trick in your first period at the Paralympic Games. Smith just measuring up proceedings here. Sweden are doing their best just to clog up lanes and channels. But end they have a very skillful operator on the other side and they are just certainly tearing apart the Swedish defense right now as Canada. Done. Done. It's the youngster and some new blood on this Canadian lineup. 17 years young. What an opportunity to shine here as it will make its way down. It will be icing against Sweden with a minute 44 seconds remaining. The shots are 15 to one for Canada. And just getting the official correction of some of the scoring here. We'll go through it as the period plays out. 
There's a lot of content there. As we have seen Bridges, Delaney on this one. It's taken by Cosolino, the latest goal scorer for Canada. The play looks like Cosolino is just going to hitch and wait. He goes up and he just waits a little too long. Sweden doing enough just to smother. Certainly trying to be an obstacle on route for the Canadians. But at the moment, they're a little bit more of a kind of a speed bump than they are a fence in front. As the Canadians have just been awesome in their execution so far. Just trying to draw and tease this defense out. Cosolino gets bumped for his troubles in, inside of a minute now of this opening period. Where, in fact, will a shot come from, the next surge, the next penetration of offense from Canada. And let me just offload it. Now, Sweden, as you see, the neutral support of the Korean crowd encouraging Sweden to come forward. And, of course, it's exactly what good sportsmanship is all about and good spirit as we see at the Olympic and Paralympic Games. All about the participation and the challenge, the struggle, the fighting well. And Sweden are fighting well. They're staying with it. There's no quit here. They are keeping the good fight going. That's into the corner here, inside of these last dozen seconds. Can they prevent Canada from scoring one? That's a little bit of a small victory if they can. They've been able to break it up. And it looks as though they have. It's an important little bit, a very small one mind you, but an important one for Sweden to punctuate the end of 15 minutes of play. It has been full throttle from Canada in the opening 15 minutes. They have taken the air right out of the balloon here in the Gagnon Hockey Center. They have put seven goals on the board and right up and down that lineup. They have certainly executed Ken Babby's game plan to perfection. There it is, confirmation. Canada are in seventh heaven right now with seven goals over Sweden in the opening 15 minutes of play. Canadian fans in the majority sitting behind the players bench of the Canadian team and certainly enjoying proceedings so far. It's not been excessive in their jubilation, but certainly there's tremendous stories for all of these athletes and their journeys to get to this stage. They won't be denied taking some pleasure in the opening 15 minutes of action from the Canadian powerhouse.
that the reflection of the opening period's work as the efficiency for the Canadians was absolutely electric. They had the one power play, they converted on it. They had the 15 shots, they were able to convert seven of those in the opening period. There was the one shot for Sweet, and then the overwhelming face-off percentage as well. Just the one penalty in it. There, there isn't a whole lot to take from those stats other than the shots really and the goals executed by Canada. They came out and just really put down a statement and a marker in the opening 15 minutes here against Sweden. And this a look at some of the action from the first period of play. This is the the movement and the penetration there from McGregor. The service here across the shoulder, Mickey. And just finding the back of the net. It's, it's quite easy, really, for the Canadians because they were moving quicker. They were anticipating the puck movement as well quicker. And they were just executing play at a higher level in that first stanza. Right here, it's a sharp, smart play. Just for Westlake to offload it and to allow McGregor to get to it and just to put that puck in. That's just the chip there from Solomicki. Don't waste any time. If you've got a chance to score, take it when it's available. Don't wait for something even better. And this from the outside, McGregor completes his hat trick over Nielsen and you can see his frustration that that he probably he thinks he should have had and I think when I've seen Nielsen previously he should have been able to make that save and this for Dixon just rotating in using bridges as a screen and it's just a real thing of beauty there as he goes to the left hand Slotting it in the far left-hand side of goal. Delaney with the feed out front for Cozzolino. Cozzolino, it looked like he was over. He was under a sled. Everybody and nobody taking Cozzolino as he comes up with the puck and then just deposits it in the back of the goal. And it makes short work again of the Swedish defense on the play. see the Canadians and both the Swedish side as well. They're anticipating their return to the ice. They equally are watching the highlights from the first period of play up in the main scoreboard, central over hanging the neutral zone in the Gangnoon Hockey Center. And that's what all the fans are having to look at. That's the entertainment and equally the, the feedback, the replays, everything that you want to know is there in venue as the Canadians will be the first ones to take to the ice. Everything's going fine for them. I think for Sweden, they knew today was going to be a long one. It looks as though Nielsen, just the way he's coming on, he's fine, he'll go back in. Wondering whether without his helmet on there, whether or not there might have been a possibility of a substitution. But he seems to be getting himself recalibrated there and ready to go. Canada seems to have found a little bit of a different identity to how they're going to play. And maybe just some of the players that have been perennial scorers and leading and, and iconic members of this Canadian side, like the Westlake, like the Bridges, taking on different roles, you know, now within the team and allowing other younger players to flourish and prosper. It's Canada looking very strong indeed as we get ready to drop the puck in the second period of action in the pair ice hockey from Pyeongchang.
and we're underway again. Canada take the draw. It's five on five. As they will immediately try to advance the puck into a position. Just a little bit of a, an overview of this tournament in pair ice hockey. There's eight teams in total. It's the top two teams after the round robin play, the preliminary round, that'll automatically qualify through to the semifinal. And the other remaining third and fourth place team in each of the groups, they'll cross over and play the other third will play fourth in the opposite group and vice versa. And those would be classification matches, qualification as to where you'll finish and your overall placement in these Paralympic games in Pyeongchang. So these preliminary round games are important, not only to obviously win and to give yourself a tie-breaking criteria, which would be to win against all your opponents or anybody that you're particularly in a, a tie-break with, but the goals scored for are a tie-breaking criteria too. So it may be that Canada just continue to come here and, and try to apply the offensive pressure and just squeeze sweep right out of this and continue to tally. But they are handling it right now and they haven't shot as yet. So we'll just see how they go about their game plan here. Bridges in the corner. And again he's just been a little bit deliberate about how he's going to maneuver that puck where he's going to go. Sweet have just packed the slot area right in front of Alf Nielsen. They've also slid it all the way down the length of the ice, and that's going to go for icing again. They won't get an opportunity to get off the ice. And that is going to prove ominous here now for Sweet as Canada. They stay with the same five. When we look over the first period of play, just some of the ice time as we watch back this play here from Dixon and he just has it come off of his stick at the crucial moment of getting a shot in on goal but the ice time for Canada pretty well distributed but Tyrone Henry 8 minutes and 45 8 11 for Rob Armstrong so just doing good work on the blue line defensively but we didn't see a whole lot of him because Canada's defense really wasn't called into question line in that opening 15 minutes but this is now the Canadians come across the line Dixon is 6 57 in ice time. In flavor, just what we've seen from Sweden so far. 13 minutes and 11 for the King Carson. Number 3, Blue Liner. There's a penalty now been taken by Sweden. And Shona Mickey comes in and picks up this loose change. And where will they go to from here? As it is going to be controlled. A little bit of a hold on the arm seems to be what's being called. In Canada with the power play. You would bet dollars that they are going to score here again in an eight. It's interesting to see just how well they use it. And it's not a place for the Canadians to feel sorry in this situation because they're going to face opponents in this tournament that are going to be ready to compete straight up against Canada and you can't turn it off and off. You have to play at the level you're capable of playing when you're playing on the world stage. When you're playing the best of your peers. is now Cosolino. Just plays it off. So Hedberg has got the penalty holding an opponent. That got seven for two there in the Canada. And another Canadian goal right out front. And Delaney gets himself on the board as now an eight is been recorded. And it's as simple as that. Delaney had that one that was saved by Alf Nielsen on the goal line. If you remember in the first period, not so much this time around. He comes right out and he does it all. It looks as though he was going to maybe just drop it in on the short side, which he could have. He went the long way around, but he knew exactly how he wanted to get there. And he scores. Armstrong, Cosolino, the two assists on the play. And Canada took a little longer in the second period to get their opening goal, but Can they've got it now. So Armstrong, Cosolino getting the assists on the play. And Delaney, the 21 year old, when he first broke out of the scene. The 18-year-old and Sashi. No, oh, they've done it again. This time it's Corbin Smith. And a ninth as 
Options aplenty and variation they have in abundance through the Canadians. And now we've got another new score. Nineteen years of age, Corbin Smith. And here on the Paralympic stage. Holds on, finds the handle, he had to double clutch at it, but then elevates it once he gets the commitment from Alf Nielsen over the prone keeper. Shonovicki <laughs> picking up an assist on the play, so here now Canada across the line. They're just upended for a second. And that's played down the ice, though, for Sweden. It'll be the icing crawl against them. So this now is just becoming a little bit of the mathematical game here. Need to get the abacus out as Canada look to be going through to double digits here in a second. back to 2015, the World Championships at the time. And the Canadians, I don't remember the score line, 20 goals in a matchup against Japan, if it's an accurate reflection, but something massive like that. So this is not done yet as they continue to come forward. Hickey. Lay on here for it's just retained by Henry. And now for McGregor. The Canadians almost a little bit of a uh, it's a blessing and a curse. They've come out here and just absolutely executed what they had hoped for, but what it's also done is it's just brought about a little bit of the possibility of some bad habits for them. They need to keep sharp and play the game, but not the scoreboard. As they come across the line here, McGregor holds up in the offload. A pass to Westlake. Westlake can't get it off as quick as he would have liked. And it's a little bit of a changing of the guard there. As you see, maybe uh, the way we see McGregor shoot, maybe he gets that puck off in the situation. There we're just seeing how much McGregor has improved. He's emerging as a leading light. Kind of a resurging Canadian program. For a, a spell, the Americans kind of took top of the para ice hockey realm, and very much so they well, they win gold and 2010 in Vancouver, and they've had a pretty glorious run. Uh, it will be interesting to see just where they're at likewise. But Canada have been that good, as the scoreline would reflect. There's a shot that goes wide right of the goal. And now, a shot, and that one goes wide from Liam Hickey. Westlake, the first man to it. So they take gold to the Americans, and then they do it again in Sochi. Right now, a different prospect here in Pyeongchang. Who knows? As is Canada back in Arsenal. For Delaney, the latest goal scorer in this hockey game. He gets hit hard at the blue line there. Back in that first period, Babby talking about the moves they need to take to try to break down this Swedish. Don't go right into the teeth, right into the mouth of their defense, which is all lined up essentially on the three lines. Let's go wide. Try to open them up. That's the kind of turn around so they're playing defense. They're looking at the glass. Nice pass out. Can't get the service there in time. And it was the attention for Delaney. Bridges by getting it off here. He does quite get all of it. That's the elevation that he would have preferred. He's kind of 
upsetting the Canadian player momentarily. Chance there for Delaney was available to the backside. Sweeten a bit decent in breaking up some of these passing lanes. The shots aren't even an entire reflection of all the chances that they've had. Some shooting it wide as well coming from Canada. This one goes and sprays up and over the goal. Nielsen was already down, electing just to lay it aside and put the big glove hand up. This lob down the length of the ice. It's going to go for icing. And Sweet. Just have a little benefit of some respite here now. Canada will make line changes. They're going to make a goalkeeper change as well. As Dominic LaRock is going to come in, Corbin Watson is going to go out. And that's a smart play by Coach Ken Babby from Canada. In a situation, in a game like this, hey. let them both get their Paralympic tournament started by playing in a game in the first game. Look back at the Delaney goal. Just dragging as much action with him. That's a real prime goal there. So a tall order for the Swedish coach, Eric Wikström, to just make sure that his team are seeing this opportunity to play against one of the best, if not arguably the best, and to learn from them and to understand how to improve your own game. And around as so goes the wave inside Gagnon Hockey Center as Andreas Neyman is also in. So an important decision. Nine goals allowed by Alf Nielsen. I don't think it's going to get better. So in that situation, you're better to take him out, give the opportunity of live gameplay to another member of your personnel. Andreas Neyman, 34 years of age. So he's got a little bit more rubber still left on his tires. As this now across the line for Dixon. Holds up. The feed. Oh, Canada right here. And that's Shola Mickey who goes off the post or the outside of the netting, rather. And he was the last recipient of it. Dixon comes back and shows you you don't have an immediate forward to reverse button on these sleds. Everything is manufactured, of course, by the individual power of the athlete. But you can't just turn and skate backwards away. Maneuver and do all manner of things. It's getting backwards is a, is a real challenge. It's pair ice hockey. It's cleared down again by uh, Australia. Or rather, my goodness. The land down under is the scoreline. It's sweet clearing the lane. It's the goal that got me. That's Hickey across this line. Oh, a shot. He'll score. He'll take it. And there for Hickey, a goal. And this, and now double digits for Canada. And it's all business for Liam Hickey as he takes this one here. Just across, and drives the net, gets the angle, and then pounds it past the club hand side of Naaman. Great 
comfortably taken there by Neil Hickey. So Armstrong and assists to Henry on the play. Twenty-one total shots now for Canada. And just the one still from Sweden. And that happened just a earlier in this period. Just a little bit of a push from them in the early stages, but now Canada again coming in waves. A shot that one had every opportunity. It's just elevated. Naaman though does get the glove hand up to it, and it would have been ready. Reloading, recharging, and this for, oh, and a save made. It's a good one, Westlake tonight. Hickey, so Naaman just bringing a little bit of uh, some new energy, but look at that from Hickey as he slots a sidewinder in off the right hip and slams it inside the left post. And they just take any moment of possibility for Sweden right out of their grasp. Hickey just comes in, bang. You got four defenders there and everybody leaves and the puck is left behind. And this now for Delaney. He'll just hold up. So not assisting goal for the Canadian. And Liam Hickey with back-to-back -back goals. He's now got two. So we've got three. We've got one hat trick already for Tyler McGregor in the first period. Hickey is on two. So is Cozzolino. And then you've got a sprinkling of Corbin Smith. Ben Delaney and Adam Dixon with goals. Interesting push here now. See just what. Or rather, the it's Shola Mickey that's got the pair, as does McGregor. He's got a hat trick already, and now Hickey has put himself on with two goals. Hard to really see in this particular match just where Canada is at in its performance curve. As they're playing the best game they can against themselves, but you do need to be pushed sometimes in order to get the best from yourself. It's difficult to always be providing that, that constant push. Now you can get it from your coach, but generally it comes from within. a pretty good demeanor on that bench. That showed a whole lot of frustration, and that's important. There's, there's a lot of games still to be played, obviously, in this tournament, and it's not done. It simply doesn't matter what the scoreline is in the end. It's a result that I think for Sweden, they fairly understand was always going to be difficult to try and obtain. Remains in the second period. Your attention and now it is Shola Mickey who's knocking on the door of a hat trick himself. Now, this is wonderful. What a finish! I didn't think the angle was there. I thought he had to go left hand if he was going to find the angle. That really is extraordinary because he knows that the way the defender is pushing him, that He's likely only got the option, if he's a right-hand shot, to go to that near post. And he finishes it still. I mean, that's extraordinary. Oh, up, off the bar, down. But the angle, you know, the attempt made there by Naaman to play it with his head, because he hasn't got a glove on that side, but he, you thought he had enough body there to just take away and, and discourage the shot from Armstrong. 
And apparently not, as you just witnessed. Armstrong with the most accurate of shots. Pinpoint placement. And now this across and forward. And a little bit of an additional move here at the line. Just forces the offside. Rakos, another one of the old guard of this Swedish team. They're an older side, trying their best to replenish with some more youth. They need it. It's the lifeblood for any team. As we look up and down, the youngest player for Sweden is the 24-year-old Peter Nielsen. He's also the Maximilian Nielsen, he's 24 as well. Good save here in the Swedish goal. on certainly got time but maybe even score another three the way he put those three to bed in short order big shot nice save just enough of it to deflect the puck up and over the net and into the corner again three Canadian jerseys down there against one Swedish defender and those odds you kind of gotta like them if you're the Canadians in the offensive zone if you're outnumbering the defender. Five on five as they come forward here. Hickey just gets slightly turned. The shot there just goes whipping wide off the end. Kick plate bounces out here to the near side. Be careful, they've kept on side of Canada. Holds up here. Shot that had all sorts of velocity on it. A double spit move just to avoid some trouble. And some excitement here. As it looked like maybe Sweet were going to be on to link up the play. But it ultimately goes down. And it goes down for icing. So we look at Sweden's journey over the last Paralympic cycle as the shot just comes traveling in James Dunn. But Sweden, they finished sixth in the World Championships here a year ago in 2017. They were not a part of the 2015 World Championships. And then of course, well, they finished eighth position. So uh, by right of finishing eighth, Sochi. They had to recompete to get their position to be able to be here in Pyeongchang. And that would have happened through the qualification tournaments and also the World Championships. And that's a little bit of their own road and journey. But this now for Westlake. Westlake has got fancy footwork there as he just is in and around the defense. Shot. Oh, he goes off the bar. He shows you just what a lethal weapon he possesses in his right hand. He's pretty comfortable with both hands, as Wesley. As he tries to go to the left, and the second period has just escaped us. As Canada come out and score a few more. As they were in good position, they were seven after the first period. They are 12 now after two periods of play. As we just quickly review what got things going. Delaney scores on the power play at 17.43. Corbin Smith at 18.06. And then Liam Hickey with a pair. 24.37 and exactly one minute later at 25.37. 
and then followed up a minute after that, it's Rob Armstrong with a, another tally for the Canadians. So they'll take an even dozen to the dressing room and regroup as it's the second intermission that's upon us here from the Paralympic Winter Games from Pyeongchang. And the Canadians are having a good time, unfortunately, at Sweden's expense in this preliminary round matchup. Confirmation of the score. It's a even dozen for Canada. Sweden still yet to score after two periods of play.
An extraordinary finish there from Armstrong is the last tally of 12 so far from Canada in this preliminary round action in Group A. It's game three overall as the service thick and fast, but the substitution of keepers at both ends of the rink proves purposeful and also effective there. Naaman gets enough of the shot in and is encouraged and gives Sweden a little bit of depth and another option, but a little bit of confidence under his belt. It has been something intoxicating to watch the way the Canadians have been able to come out here and execute a game plan designed solely without doubt. The Canadians with eyes on a medal here in Pyeongchang. Is it going to be the color that they desire most? Well, it won't be won or lost in the first day of competition. Team Sweden has certainly Canada. come out and make a statement, and they have done so as they now return to ice ahead of this third period. Captain Canada, Westlake. More of a facilitator. Now you see with McGregor on that unit. And that's one thing you see about the personnel within a para ice hockey team is that their age and even their shift length. If it seems a little bit odd that I say that, but some of the preeminent oh, players in man. these lineups have he shift lengths of over two minutes, which is totally unheard of in the sport of ice hockey. The comparable cousin to para ice hockey. And therefore, equally the age of Alf Nielsen, who was in goal, 53 years of age. And the oldest was Yarmir Yager in ice hockey, up to 45, but that's very unusual. As there we are with the scene set and the crowd building with excitement. The volume still in here is exceptional. They're doing a great job. And this Korean crowd is loving Paralympic sport as everybody keeps their eyes on the glory of participation on the world stage. As we await the clock to count down and for it to be ready and reset for the final 15 minutes of the day's work for both of these nations. Underway, McGregor feeds it back for Dixon. And this onto the stick of Liam Hickey. He knocks on the door. Oh, that's a big hit coming in. Straight up and 
you can do that front on. What you can't do is come in side on. That's a real swiping effort from Ingerson. He loses the one stick, he comes up with it. and that's an absolute rocket as he goes and gets his goal scoring tally started in Pyeongchang. And right back and ready for the drop of the puck. All business Canada as Bridges closes the gap there and that even in slow motion it looks it was difficult to pick the puck up as it was traveling through the air. We do get it there. That's quite clear, but that was an overwhelming, just a staggering shot for Billy Bridges. Unassisted, that one. As he just took his moment there, and Bridges is part of the cornerstone of this Canadian program. Gold records, point records, shared in amongst these top personnel for Canada. Bridges will just come up with it here, and now that he's got a taste of it, oh, he tries to make that pass. And you can see a changing dimension to Bridges' game, and it's a maturity. As they can see that they've had to maybe not see themselves as the prime scorers anymore. That maybe that torch has been handed off. They can still score. So from Bridges. But they are, as Westlake does as well, moving it around and utilizing all the players on the ice and engaging them all in order to have a strong lineup. They often say you're only as strong as your weakest link. Everybody needs to be involved. Look at that play across and a pass. Armstrong just slams it home like he was just whacking the puck away from defensive danger. Just wax it. Like a beaver might whack the water with his tail. Watch this here. As Bridges with just the backhand slides it through. Bang. Very precise pass there from Billy Bridges across to Armstrong. And now he's got two. So Sholamicki, Hickey, and Armstrong with a pair of goals each. So is there a another hat trick coming for Canada? McGregor's already got one. Casalino with another point. So the Canadians will be all over the leading scoring in the tournament as far as the stats and the individual stat line there. He's still shot 30 to 1. There's a good save and an important one to be made. Andreas Neyman. He just takes that one. He had to make the save. It wasn't like it hit him right in the chest. It fell into his lap. He had to be prepared that it didn't come off too loose and easy. That's the key for any keeper. Sweet 
a little bit slow getting themselves out to the face-off alignment. That's different moves. As a result, the, the center ice move was in position. Ingerson comes up, and we see he's just clutching it. That puck just trying to make sure that it's just not able to be manipulated freely by the Canadians. Oh, that had serious heat on it from Dixon as he takes the shot from the outside. That was a design for the top of the goal. So Dixon with that beautiful goal earlier where he went right to left hand and utilized the screen of Billy Bridges in front. Well taken, without a doubt, you can say that. Spinning move there. Henry just offloads it. Comes down is Armstrong. And he gets the feedback. Can he come out of the short post here and make something happen? There's an overlap as they're running a real effective cycle here. And Shola Mickey, they're not going to count it. They're going to wave it off as there was. Interference in the crease there. And I wonder if it was Shola Mickey who went through the keeper really with a little too much force, or whether there was another little bit of contact on the play. But it might have been Shola Mickey who just was taking a beautiful line coming out from behind the goal line and looking to really be direct. But it's led to a face off outside of Sweden's defensive blue line. So we'll watch it here. Shola Mickey picks this up from Armstrong and he comes out. And just gets wrapped up into the stuff. And you see the frustration there from Naaman. He puts the stick in. Well, you know, it's a tough one, that one. Because Naaman puts the stick in and trying to make a poke check. And so Shona McKee can't do much about it. He's just got to ride the stick. But he's not gone through the blue paint there. But simply by right of being connected to the stick of the goalkeeper, he's causing duress and obviously interference. So the, the play gets called off. This now for Shola Mickey. Is he going to do something about it this time? He might just shoot it from here. A quick one. Oh, that's a hot shot. And it's taken into the glove. And as you see, it's the quickness of the release of the Canadians. They are not. They don't waste a whole lot of time. Generally right-hand dominant wanting to release those shots, and they have been, but that one scorching. But a comfortable glove height. And this continuing to work around ways of, of control. It's just measurement pretty coming in from Canada right now. That's a shot. What a goal from Shola Becky. He's got his hat trick now as it comes across there from McGregor. And that really was impressive because you knew he wanted it. He scored it a moment ago and he was a little bit, got the, the short end of the stick, shall we say, on the call. But this time he goes and makes it count. He just double backs here and just opens up. I mean, that's impressive because he has his back to the play on the service, and it was Corbin Smith, rather, than McGregor. The 8-9, the speed which they play, but they're very similar in their dynamic, are both Corbin Smith and Todd McGregor. But this comes from Smith and Dunn, the assists on this one. But Shona Mickey had to reach back and then also sling it forward at the same time, and that's not easily done. Because you're, you're in an awkward prone position, and you've got a develop power. Accuracy, so uh, very well earned Patrick there from Sholomicki for Canada. And Brian Sholomicki, an emerging presence as well. You can see it and growth and development and maturity in his game too. And now he's kind of coming forward. And again, a reflection of this evolving personnel for Canada. Sholomicki, 37 years young. So, rather a later starter in the sport of para ice hockey. Certainly was in the lineup for Canada and Sachi. Has had such a emerging role like he has now here at Pyeongchang. We saw it in the World Championships last year, but there has been a little changing of the guard. More 
opportunity now being afforded to, to a wider spread of, of Canadian players. Shot there, that almost is enough, just to handcuff this. That's McGregor with the shot. Hickey out front trying to get to Wesley. Kept on, and this is Wesley who just turns away from it. Out in front, can they just, again, find this puck? They cannot. And that'll make its way around. Canada are the first ones to it. McGregor just trying to feed that in and just apply the force of more puck retention and equally maybe a chance here for a shot. Dixon, you think, might shoot from here. He likes to make a pass, a great service there. What a finish there. Oh, McGregor has put another goal on the board. As this is demonstration stuff right now for Canada. continue just to find those different passing looks and just trying to open up Sweden by as many ways as they can. But that pass across the goal mouth area at McGregor just scoops and fires. Officially, it's McGregor at 36-48 from Liam Hickey and Adam Dixon with Canada's 16th goal. That's even strike. And last, last eight of them. That's it. It's the power play goal. That was back at 17-43 from Ben Delaney. So that in the early stages of the second period, that was in the power play. But since then, Canada have been doing it even strike. And that one. You know, it's, it's amazing just how even that little flicker there. Sweet. We're not going to get to that puck. Haynes knew they could recover comfortably. And he's never really in doubt. This is bad enough for Sweet. Coming forward with a little bit more purpose. Marcus Hall. Skating with some speed. Really good attention. Getting a little bit of room out there. This is better. He's staying with it as well. But Gosolino just spins and keeps himself out of tight places. And Dixon, the shot. Oh, it's a tremendous thing on the glove hand. Dixon, who could leverage a shot quick too. I mean, just seeing him so activated is Dixon as a blue liner anymore. It's a really unique role the way he plays the game, even if it's controlled down low. He's always hovering around in the slot, top of the circle, and behind the goal offensively. Arsenal feeds it up. Called Arsenal's name a whole lot today, but that's because the play has been predominantly in the possession of the Canadian forwards. Billy Bridge has done well just to keep that puck from being maneuvered away from him, and now he makes his way to the bench and powers off for a line change. I was commenting earlier just about the length of the shifts and some of the uh, personnel well up over two minutes, and those are, those are incredible numbers. The length of shift on the ice out front here for Canada. Can they come up with a, an attempt just to get through to Naaman? able to for a moment, but they now there's a good body check. And that's good to see from Sweden just staying with it. Christian Hedberg is taking out the Canadian forward. Just reminding them that they aren't just, in fact, statues in the defensive zone that the Canadians can just navigate their way out. Resilience, a little bit of resolve coming from Sweden here. They've held the Canadians off the board. It looks as though the Canadians are going to get to 20, which is 
necessarily an objective ahead of the match, but as the goals come in, it seems like the next most likely target, the way it has been going. Corporal Smith, very smart and effective on the puck here. Another maturing player in his Canadian lineup. No doubt seeing a lot of McGregor, Tyler McGregor, as he was playing with him in practice and the rest. He seems to develop some tendencies in some of those movements. Very similar to McGregor. This on a partial break, a line change from Sweden just allows them to recover their position. Westlake seeing a lot more from Canada on these controlled pieces. Playing a game effectively of keep away right now. And that's what they are trying to execute. Westlake has just been able to pry that one off the boards. Unfortunately, there is having to be a clearing of the lines. Sweet had done well stacking up the line. Canada's just offloading that had proven itself so effective and you their shot making has been extraordinary. In this opening match of the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. Correction on the 16th goal for Canada. It is just a lone assist to Adam Dixon. And a goal, of course, belonging to Tyler McGregor, his fourth of the game. And now, show to Mickey. He's got a hat trick as well in this hockey game. Liam Hickey is still on two. So is Rob Armstrong. We've got enough time here. We'll see McGregor down, and this is Armstrong. And Hickey's out front, so both those players on the ice right now that are knocking on the door of a potential three-goal hat-trick locked down by the Swedish keeper. It looks like it's under Oyala there. As he's trying to just make life difficult for anybody to come up with it. He might be sitting on it. He may have tucked in his shorts. Nobody seemed to be able to find it there for a spell. And a wry smile seems to always be on the face of Westlake enjoying the action. And there's the Westlake shot inside that dot and he goes central it's just pounded down by Naaman maybe doesn't get quite the angle that he would like to have taken on that puck over towards the right side of goal and you see a, a very dignified acknowledgement uh, from the Swedish fans of what they're witnessing here today they are witnessing a we're witnessing a nation that's got eyes on a gold medal here in Pyeongchang. That's who they're playing against today. It's won by Canada. It's kept in by Armstrong. And just working into a position here. Can they, in fact, come up with a little bit more? Oh, there's a punch. And this is twice now. Delaney has taken trouble. And now Delaney's getting a rough ride here. And I'm not sure entirely why he's still in there and looking for mischief as he's been able to drag three Swedish players. I don't know whether or not they're going to get penalized. Delaney coming away with nothing, though, is the thing. He took a lot of, of rough riding there. For what purpose, I'm not entirely sure. Now, there you see he just stays in and continues to. I guess they get their equipment locked up, don't they? And then, then you just decide to stay with it rather than flee the scene. So not that easy, I suppose, to get yourself out of there, particularly in the three Swedish jerseys around you. Pretty much had them hemmed in as well. Two twenty-three remain in the hockey game. 
and both teams competing well. There's an indication. Delaney still going. And you wonder what he's chewing there. If in fact he is chewing gum. We hope that there's he's never an incident with that. Being surprised with the hit. In fact, he is. Which could be a real problem, potentially. Now here for Canada. They shoot again. And this is a battle just to try to come up and just retain it inside two minutes as that puck will just leave the offensive zone. And the lone shot still remains on the board for Sweden. That's all they've been able to muster. I wouldn't expect another one as this one just gets offloaded and it's Canada who comes to get it. Oh, I spoke too soon. Here comes Hedberg. They do. That's good. It's important. A little bit of something. And that was against the run of play and against the grain of what we have seen over pretty much the majority of this match. And then a snapping save made by Naaman in goal. That's good confidence. So he's come in, he's made some good saves. And we'll look at the at the point when he came in, and there has been there's been seven goals scored against him, so it was nine goals at the time that Naaman came in. And Alf Nielsen went out. At the same time, it was very similarly when Dominic Barak came in and Corbin Watson was retrieved by the Canadian coach, Ken Babby, and said, let's just get everybody involved here. As this to be fed forward. Oh, and a slicing effort there from Hickey. He's on the doorstep of a, of a hat trick. He'd love it. Hold up here now. McGregor already has four. Lays it off there for Hickey. Can they do enough just to open up this defense, though? Westlake. He's giving Hickey a chance here. He's going to have to be clever. That's smart. A little offload inside the last minute here of the game. McGregor just awaiting his chance there. A save. It's a good one. And he got off a pretty good effort there. So they are still intending on scoring even in this last minute of play. Our Canada. McGregor, if he's given a chance. Look at that play across the Westlake. And that's a real dynamic feed to have taken it, and then the left-handed strike from Westlake. We'll just see another goal for Canada. And 17 on the board with 17 seconds remaining in the game. This, a little bit of the underneath, no look, pass, and Westlake knows exactly what to do with it from there. Seconds are slipping away. Canada again punctuates every sequence in this hockey game. They have dominated really from start to finish, and it will now be recorded as an official result in Pyeongchang. It's the first match for both of these sides. Canada comes out and with a resounding performance to put a punish right on to the Swedish hopes of just trying to gently ease their way into this tournament. Canada, no plan of that at all. They've come to here and gotten to work right from the beginning and a spread of gold up and down their lineup. And just a, a fire of offense from Canada as they really announce their arrival in Pyeongchang. And the teams as they respectfully do after the games acknowledging each other and now they'll come forward and shake one another's hands or as is more customary these days, the fist bump, which of course makes more sense for the pair of the big
athletes. They'll acknowledge each other in the spirit in which the Paralympic Games was born. 70 years ago this year, the start of the Paralympic movement, para ice hockey has been involved at the Paralympic Games since 1994 in Lillehammer. So it's seventh official version of this tournament here in Pyeongchang. And you're seeing one of the powerhouses of the sport, the Canadians, right since the inception in 94. Great respect there, as there is between all of the nations and the coaching staff with the opponent personnel as well. The fans in true regard and respect for the integrity of competition, and of course, yes, impressed by how well the Canadians did perform. And they'll be feeling good, and they're gonna go take their business now to the locker room and shut down the day's proceedings they really came out to the Canadians as sweet now reflects on a day's work. And look at that. It's great to see the energy there. The love for the game and the love for the support they received today from their traveling fans. And look at the smiles. Even from the Canadian fan there just on the left side of the screen. That tells a story. The discussion that's going on there with Sweden and Wikström is about thinking their way through this tournament to make sure that they don't have to be relegated and they don't end up being relegated in eighth position. I know it sounds a, a strong statement to make, but history indicates that Sweden has been in and around that position at the top bracket, and unfortunately, after Sachi, they were relegated down and had to work their way back up. But this is the official result. Canada 17, Sweden, they had a couple shots, but unable to score in this preliminary round match in Group A. We ask that you please assist us by taking your trash and personal belongings with you and to the seating areas. We appreciate that. We saw a potent and overpowering display from Canada in their first match in Pyeongchang as they took on Sweden and they absolutely demolished them. And they have certainly expressed their intention here in Pyeongchang. A proud Swedish lineup will recover and regroup and be preparing themselves for their second match. Canada 
Is that the best that they have to offer? Well, we're going to find out if, in fact, they are that good as they take on the other nations in this tournament. A great first day in day one of Paralympic para ice hockey from Pyeongchang. Please follow our staff's direction. 